The holidays are here! We fantasize all year long about the holidays, about Christmas movies, rum and eggnog, maybe some mulled wine, holiday parties, time off, time with those we love, making gingerbread houses, a white Christmas, or maybe a white sand Christmas if you're on the beach in Australia and having shrimp on the barbie. And then December hits, and so does the stress, the overwhelm, and the busyness. Before you know it, January 1st is here, and not only did you completely fall off your routine and missed your business targets, forgot about your workouts, and stopped writing your book, but you also didn't go ice skating or watch your favorite movie. What gives? In this episode, I'm dishing my top five tips to have fun this holiday season while feeling connected, drinking the hot chocolate, eating the delicious food, and not throwing away your goals for the year. By the end of this episode, you'll be ready to soak up the best of the season while maintaining your momentum you got going right now and setting yourself up for success in the new year. Welcome to the Golden Girls Podcast, where we believe you can have it all. I'm your host, Lisa Michaud, and I'm spilling tangible tips, goal-getting strategies, and real-life stories to inspire you to tackle your biggest dreams. You're a woman who knows you're made for more. Get ready to leave the excuses and self-doubt behind by being vulnerable, sharing your truth, and having honest conversations so you can succeed on your terms. Together, we'll set goals you'll actually achieve by staying motivated, having fun, and building a community of women empowering women. It's time to tap into your best self, get confident, and truly have it all. Golden Girl, let's dive in. Hey there, Golden Girl. Thank you so much for joining for this episode of the Golden Girls Podcast. Today, I'm sharing my top five tips for keeping up with your goals while making your holidays fun and meaningful exactly how they're meant to be. I want to start by saying this, that in my family and my country, we celebrate Christmas, and I know that not all of you do. So for some of you, Chinese New Year is a celebration, and some of you celebrate birthday months, which is so awesome, and I want to say just all the power to you, and whatever you're celebrating, whatever holiday it is, you can actually apply this, and even though I'm going to be talking about Christmas today and December and that holiday season, you can apply this to any special celebration or busy season in your life. I also want to acknowledge with real gratitude that I live in a country where we can celebrate different holidays and celebrations and learn from each other. I'm a Canadian, and this is something that I'm so proud of is is our diversity and all the cultures and the ways of life we have here. So whether Christmas or um, anything around the holidays is something that you celebrate or not, I know you can use these tips for any busy season, any holiday your culture has or religion or your country takes part in. As you're listening, by the way, I'd love to hear your takeaways, and I want to hear about your special celebrations too, so please make sure that you comment and engage in our community. Join our free Golden Girls Podcast Insiders Facebook group, which you'll find the link in the show notes, and share with me on social media. DM me, comment, let me know about your celebrations too, because I'm talking about my experience because that's what I can speak to, but I want to hear about yours too, and I think it's so cool I, I'm just humbled that we can all celebrate our different cultures, religions, and celebrations and learn from each other. So thank you for listening and thank you for hearing about my experience and what I'm up to here for my holidays. So I want to start out with a listener shout out here and this one is from Megan Ayers. Megan says, Golden Girls is five stars. Well, thank you, Megan. That's so sweet. Lisa does a great job through this podcast to help you get clear on your goals and what you want to do with your life. It's a podcast that you want to pour a cup of coffee, grab your notebook, and get down to dreaming and creating. If you're a gold digger, this podcast is for you. Thanks, Lisa, for sharing your wisdom, strategies, and knowledges, sorry, knowledges, knowledge through your podcast. Thank you, Megan. I so appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to write that beautiful review. And you guys, if you want to be featured too, I would love to feature you. So I know the season is very busy for you. I know your time is precious. But if you could take a moment and take that phone out of your pocket, scroll to the bottom and hit write a review, take two minutes to do that, it would make my day and truly my week. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you, Megan, for writing that amazing review. I love it. And Gold Diggers, let's get going. Well, I got to tell you. Christmas is one of my favorite times of year. It is by far my favorite holiday. So I'm going to be sharing what's relevant and special to me. And I hope that this resonates for you too. I got to tell you a funny, we have a family friend and she always used to say, I don't know why they put Christmas at the busiest time of year. And secretly I would always laugh because uh, the reason why this time of year is busy is because of Christmas. Christmas parties, Christmas cookie trades, friends misses, meeting Santa, 
doing gingerbread houses, advent calendars, buying Christmas gifts, going to Christmas concerts, all of the things. I also know that while this is all fun and exciting stuff and we hype this up, especially, you know, with the Christmas in July stuff, we, we look forward to it. But it can also be one of the most stressful times of year, especially for women, uh, for entrepreneurs, for, for moms trying to get everything ready in our careers, trying to hit year-end targets. That pressure that we sometimes feel to do it all and to have it all together, I feel like that gets turned up to about a thousand percent during the holidays. So here are my top five tips to keep your holidays light and meaningful and stay on track with your goals so January doesn't turn out to be a complete gong show. Number one, reconnect to your goal and decide what's most important. As you're listening to this right now, think about your goal and where you're at. How much focus do you really want and need on it this holiday season? And this really comes down to how how do you want to feel? What are you looking to do over this holiday? Some people, and maybe you're listening to this, you're like, you know, I'm feeling inspired. I want to keep going and that's important to me. Maybe during this holiday, you've had a really busy year and you need to feel relaxed. Maybe you want to focus on feeling refreshed. Maybe you want to be connected to those around you. I don't know how you want to feel, but I want you to connect to that and then decide on where your goal is at and how much focus you really want to put on it. I want to give you permission to release some of the pressure. Uh, You know, there's a couple things here. One of them, I want to say this, you know, if you're looking at your goal and it's December and you're like, holy, I did not achieve it. I did not do it. If you still want that, if that goal still matters to you, keep going. Full disclosure here, I did not hit my goal. I set myself a really crazy goal and I didn't hit it. And you know what? This goal still matters to me. I still want it. And so I'm going to keep going for it and it will just be my goal next year and that's okay. This is, I feel like timelines and the end of the year, it's just a chance for you to reflect and figure out, are you still on the right track? Are Is this goal still important to you? And how important is it so that you know how to keep going? So this is just my permission to you to, and reminder to not give up. If this still matters, and just because you didn't hit it, that's okay. And decide where do you want to go for December? How do you want to be feeling? How will you, how will you know that your holidays are going to make you feel the way you want to feel? Because the last thing I want for you is to go through this whole holiday season to get the end of it and feel even more burnt out and exhausted going into the new year. So connect to how you want to feel and decide what kind of focus does your goal need and do you want this holiday season. When you've reconnected to your goal and decided what's important, I want you to decide on what progress you're committed to actually getting and to on your goal and also what you're willing to let go of. Now, I highly recommend not like letting go altogether. Momentum is so powerful and it, it's only momentum if you keep going. So I highly suggest that if you've been really diligent in making sales calls, in writing your gratitude journal every day, in moving your body for 20 minutes every day, don't let it all go. Don't just throw it out the window, but find a way that works for you that that you can still make it happen in maybe smaller chunks or in a lesser way so that you can soak up the rest of the holidays. So don't stop working out altogether, but maybe you can find some YouTube videos and set yourself up for success so you can do workouts while you're traveling. Or maybe you find workout classes where you're visiting family. Commit to eating healthy 80% of the time and allowing yourself to enjoy the holiday food and drinks that you love the most. Maybe instead of you spending every Saturday and Sunday morning working on your book or your business, you decide to take it down to just one of those days and just Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings end up being holiday time with family. The key here is that you decide. You decide what feels right for you and what's going to make sense for for your goal and how you want to feel. Like I said, I recommend not pulling the gas pedal off altogether because it is really hard to then put the gas pedal back on, but you also don't want to get overwhelmed. And if you need a chance to reconnect and refresh and relax, do what's right for you and step back where it feels right. You probably know the answer to this. Don't let me pressure you into doing more than what you can handle. And also remember that consistency and momentum has gotten you where you are. And fall in love with that process. Fall in love with what you're doing in your goals. And if you're enjoying that, which I hope you are, by the way, if you're not enjoying what you're doing with your goals, then you probably got the wrong goal and you're not going to be successful long term. Then you working and keeping focus on your goal along the way, along through the holidays, can actually be something that sets you up for more success and makes you feel better. I know for me, I really work on working out while I'm with 
during the holidays because it's so busy and that's like my fun time. So if you love your goal, which I hope you do, you can actually also use that as a some some joy, some you time, some self-care during this hol- busy holiday season. So number one, reflect on your goal and decide what is most important to you. Here is tip number two. There is a song that plays pretty much every night as we're putting Sonoma to bed and there's this one line in it that makes me pause Take a deep breath and reflect every single time I hear it. And the quote is, life is what happens when we're busy making other plans. Every night that I hear that and it just hits me and it makes me stop and think, this is life. Like, this is my life. This is what I'm soaking up. This is what I get the joy, the pleasure of enjoying. And I feel like this with the holidays means so much. You know, it's so easy to get caught up in the doing, the achieving, the goals, the the accolades, the the money, the whatever we're trying to chase. And while we're doing that, it can be so easy to lose track of the fact that life is here and now and we are in it and we are not promised tomorrow. So we've got to soak up what we got today. That's why this tip I think is one of my favorites and it is to have a holiday bucket list. What are the things you want to do? I actually do this in the summertime as well, and there are some months where when I feel like I've worked too much or I just haven't gotten out of my house enough, I make these little bucket lists, like things that I want to do, and then I get intentional about it. I believe that when we are intentional about our downtime, that makes such a big difference to us feeling like we have more time and feeling more balanced. And really, at the end of the day, it's all about feeling that way that we want to feel. So here's my challenge to you. Write a bucket list. What are the things you want to do this season? Is it watch a certain Christmas movie? What are your, what are your favorites? Is it uh, make mulled wine? Is it go ice skating? M- literally make a list. Put it in your phone or write it down. Maybe this is a really fun thing too you can do with your partner or with a group of friends or with your family and your kids. Like write down the list and then put it in your calendars. Pick a weekend that you're going to go to the Christmas market. Find a time and book the tickets for the Christmas train uh, or the Christmas movie or whatever it is that you want to do. But Get intentional about this and it's so easy to just zoom through the whole holidays and be so focused on, you know, making the cookies and unless, by the way, this is me projecting because I don't really like baking. So for me, making the cookies would not be as much fun as going ice skating, but for you, that might be different. It basically what I'm trying to say is write down what are the things that you really want to do and how you want to feel, how, what do you want to enjoy this season and then put those in your calendar first. You know, I'm a big fan of planning. So put those in your calendar, block that off and make those things happen first. And so if you don't wrap all the gifts perfectly, or if you don't get to the baking, or if you don't watch the Christmas movie that you don't really care about, that's okay. Because you did the things that really mattered. You got to experience the the Christmas train that you wanted to do, or you did the walk in the snow like you wanted to, or you built a snowman or whatever it was that was exciting for you. And for those of you guys, again, that are using doing Christmas in the sun, heck yes, you you go, you enjoy that and make sure that your bucket list just includes the things that, that those of us in the snowy parts of the world are not enjoying. Like maybe you're scuba diving or building sand castles or whatever magic you are doing. I'm a little jealous, frankly, right now. <laughs> okay. Now, tip number three, deboss. I just made this up, but it works. Um, basically, if it's not in your goals and it's not on your bucket list, you deboss it, which means that you delegate, you batch, you outsource, you simplify, or you stop doing everything else. This season, this, this time of year, everyone is going to want your time, your attention, your money. There's going to be so many things to do. And if you allow that to all come in, you're going to fall off the wagon on your goals. You are not going to get to do the things that you really want to do, spend time with the people that are most important to you, get the relaxing downtime that you need, or do the ice skating like you want to. So if it is not a part of your goals and it is not on your holiday bucket list, deboss. Now I'm going to tell you guys some of the things that I do. And this is, by the way, you do you. I'm just going to share what works for me and what I do, what I don't do, what I simplify. I might get some haters because I know some of the purists are going to be like, what? You don't do Christmas cards or you don't do this or whatever. Hey, you know what? I got to say this. You do what works for you. I'm just going to share with you guys my perspective and please know that you know what's right for you and you know what's important to you. And if you don't, that's what you got to figure out. And you put that on your bucket list and everything else you're going to deboss, delegate, batch, outsource, simplify, or stop doing. So batching. So for example, something you can do is to put all your Christmas baking on one day if you quote, have to do it or want to do it. If this is something that you love doing, that like, heck, spend a whole week doing it. For me, it's something I don't really love doing. Um, 
but it, I I want to do a little bit of it and spend some time with my family doing it. So I'll I'll batch it all in one day. I'll do all the ba- all the baking and get it done. Okay, outsourcing. Yep, I pick up Costco pies. Um, <laughs> get someone else to make it for you. Frankly, I'm doing a cookie trade this this year. It's a vegan cookie trade and. I'm probably just going to go and outsource this too this year because uh, I don't really know how to make vegan cookies, but I'm going to learn. Um, last year, we – okay, this is, again, the Christmas purists are going to be like, what are you doing? We ordered takeout Chinese food for Christmas Eve and it was awesome. <laughs> it was so great because everyone could just actually spend time together, have conversations. It was one of the first year my whole family was together and it ended up being an even bigger blessing in disguise because we all got super sick. Uh, we were traveling. Um all of us were vomiting. Sonoma pooped on the floor of my parents' Christmas dinner, like <laughs> on the floor, right on the floor. So we were so grateful to just have a really simple dinner and to outsource that. So I know what you, some of you guys might be like, what? You can't outsource Christmas Eve dinner? Yeah, we did. And it was awesome. And it was Chinese food and it was delicious. So I'm just going to give you that permission here. Not that you need mine, but you know, just do what works for you. Make it fun. Outsource it. Buy the Costco pies, <laughs> get higher, pay the extra $2 and get Amazon Prime to do the wrapping for you or what, whatever works for you. Outsource that crap, man. If you're not, if it's not really important to you, outsource it. Um, okay. Simplifying. Well, there are so many things you can simplify. I think around the holidays we get so caught up in, well, I gotta do the, do the cards and the cards have to have the photos. So I have to then do the photo shoot and I gotta hire the photographer and get all the things printed. Like, okay, what if we went crazy and we just bought regular cards and mailed those out? How, what would that be like? Or what if we simplified and we just printed out pictures and put them inside cards and did that? Um, this is again, not to say if you love the family photos and the holiday photos, you love sending the cards by all means, girl, do it. Do what you love. Do what's most important to you. But that's the key. Do what's most important to you. And the other things, simplify it. Um, do you have to wrap all the gifts? Do you have to do gifts? You know, in in our family, and this is also kind of ties to the stop doing part of the D-Boss whole thing that I just made up. Uh, do you, who, who in your family or friends circles um, – do you want to exchange gifts with in your, in your, can you guys do a secret Santa kind of thing, uh, in your friend group or in your family? Again, simplifying just so you can spend more time spending time with people as opposed to frantically in malls stressing out about gifts and, and things that aren't really serving you. So again, I know there's some of you guys that love getting gifts. And so this doesn't apply to you. If you love that, you do that. I know some of you, this is uh, your love language, um, which is awesome. And it's not mine. I suck at it. And so this is something that I try and simplify. Stop doing is the last category. So we, my husband and I haven't done gifts for years. Instead, we focus on either taking a trip or doing something special together. So this year, we're probably going to maybe go to the spa together or um, maybe even just a date night. I'm not sure. Last year, we were both so sick that it didn't happen. Um, But my family, we all together, we've also stopped doing gifts. And instead, we're saving up money to go on a trip together, which is really cool. Also, like I said, and some of you guys might hate me for this, I know it like really makes my mom just completely appalled, but I I don't do Christmas cards. I did them for a lot of years and it was, wasn't something that brought me joy. It, I just found it really stressful. And so I don't do it. I write a couple of cards, um, for my mom and my husband and that's about it. And everybody else, I just say, I love you friend and I'm not doing it. So those are a couple of the suggestions. This is just what I did to batch and what I outsourced, what I simplified, and what I stopped doing. And again, you got to do what works for you. Oh, you know what I just realized? And here we go, making mistakes along the way. I delegate. I delegate a lot of things. Um, who else can can help out? Can someone else do the shopping? Can someone else uh, – ins- this is a great one, by the way. For those of you guys that are hosting dinners or wanting to host a party – Instead of you doing all the things, maybe you doing all the decor and organizing the music and organizing the food and the drinks, can you delegate? Can you ask someone else to pick something up for you? Can you ask everyone to do a potluck? Can you um, get somebody else to make the the playlist? Like delegate what what is going to work so that it doesn't stop you from doing what you really want to do, which is bringing everybody together because that's that's where the magic is, right? So don't forget the, uh, the delegate piece in there. So that's my permission to you. If it's not a part of your goals that you're going to keep working on for the rest of the year, and it's not on your holiday bucket list, you're going to deboss it. You're going to delegate. You're going to batch. You're going to outsource, simplify, or stop doing everything else. All right, on to tip number four. Focus on you. This time of year, it is so tempting to put everyone else first. 
this person's gift, this person's party, this person's request, this, all of the things. But when you are exhausted, you put out exhaust fumes into the world. Mm-hmm. Do you hear that? If you are exhausted, you're just putting out exhaust fumes out there. The holidays are not the time to be a martyr. And frankly, it's, it's never time to do that, but the holidays especially. Put aside some time for you. And I know you're thinking, holy crap, Lisa, but I already have all these things to do and end of the year this and working on my goals, blah, 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 blah. If you do not put yourself first, you are going to not enjoy the holidays. So book yourself a massage. Heck, book yourself a spa day. This is something that I've started doing, by the way, with with my family, with my sister and my mom. Instead of doing gifts, we just go and do a spa day and spend the time together. Make the time for your meditations. This is probably the most important time to, to do this. If you're a meditator, you know this is so important. Workouts, book them in. Go for a walk. Spend the quality time with those that matter. Put your phone down more. This, while the holidays can be this really crazy and high pressure season, I also think that the world slows down in other ways. And this can give you a really, really great chance to step away from things. You know, lots of workplaces are more casual. Some of them shut down altogether. People get it if you don't reply to them right away in your emails and your messages. So take advantage of this grace period and take advantage of this time and this space and remember to focus on you. If you don't focus on you, you know what's going to happen. You're going to snap at somebody and you're probably in your family or maybe at work. (laughs) You're going to end up being stressed. You're not going to actually enjoy the dinner or the holiday party or whatever you're doing because you're so worried about anything else or you're just too tired to even pay attention. So you guys, during this season, do not forget about you. Put aside some time, even if it's for a couple walks a week or sticking to your workouts or planning some evenings off if that's what's going to work for you. If you can't do all the holiday parties, that just drains you. Focus on that time for you. Make the time for you. Put down your phone. Set an out of office on your email. This is the time. Take advantage of the fact that everybody else is busy and use it as a space for you to recharge, reconnect, and to just have some fun without always feeling like you need to be on. All right, I have to admit something to you. I am definitely a bit of a skincare junkie. If you looked at my toiletries bag when we travel or my bathroom sink, you would see that I absolutely love high quality skincare. A few months ago, a local company reached out to me and offered me some samples of their skincare line. Since then, I've really fallen in love with the products. You may have noticed that I'm pretty chatty and when I find something that I love, I get excited and want to share it with everyone I know, like you. That's why I'm so pumped to have partnered with Riversol to offer you, my Golden Girls podcast listeners, access to their amazing products in a really special way. First of all, you got to know this. Riversol products are created by a certified dermatologist with over 20 years of experience. All their products are vegan. They are never tested on animals. And if you have sensitive skin, I know you'll especially love their products. If you want to try a free 15-day sample of the Riversol products, head on over to lisamichaud.com forward slash skin sample or check out the link in my show notes below. Even better than that, well, if you fall in love with their products, which I feel like you probably will, use the code MISHOW15, and don't worry, that's in the show notes too, and you'll save 15% off any purchase. To shop, go to lisamichaud.com forward slash skin shop. As I'm saying these links out loud, I'm like, man, these are a little awkward, but you know what? The awesome skincare products definitely make up for that. My personal favorites are the refreshing gel cleanser and the daily moisturizing cream. After just a few months of using them, my skin feels so hydrated, much softer, and just fresh, which is such a great feeling if I do say so myself. So go ahead, Golden Girls, grab your free samples and give them a try. When you fall in love with the products, make sure you take advantage of the exclusive 15% off discount, and I really hope that you enjoy them as much as I do. All right, number five, and this is a biggie, how to handle the crazy relatives. I probably should have said this up front that we're going to talk about family dynamics and all that stuff because I know that this is very real during the holidays. Now, I got to put in a disclaimer here. I'm going to talk about family dynamics, and in this, I am not talking about abusive situations or violent situations. That's not what I'm talking about here. And if that is the dynamic in your family, 
this advice is not for you. And if that's the case, I highly, highly encourage you to work with professionals in that field. This is not for abusive or violent or any of those those kinds of situations. What I'm going to share here when I talk about my quote, crazy relatives, I'm going to just keep this a little light here. I'm talking about those of us that get annoyed or frustrated or irritated by our otherwise really lovely and perfectly normally, possibly a little dysfunctional families. I'm talking about the dysfunction that exists in all families and frankly in all relationships as we're growing and we have growing pains. So please, if you have a a family that has abuse or violence Get the support that you need and know that whatever boundaries you have in place, whatever um, support that you you need, you you get that and you keep that up. Now, let's talk about my family dysfunction because <laughs> what's a good holiday conversation without this light topic? And let's talk about how this shows up. Okay, so a few years back, I read this quote and it was said something like that. I, I wish I could find it again, but it says something like, I think I'm so enlightened and mature. And then I spent a week with my family at Christmas. Yeah, that is pretty much me. I am so grown up. I'm so mature. I'm so wise and evolved and personally developed. Yay me. And then I get around my family and I get crazy sometimes. Like I'm not kind. I'm not positive. I snap. I get passive aggressive sometimes. Don't you guys want to come hang out with me for the holidays? This is getting getting raw and real. Why is this? Okay, so – Maybe you can relate to this. Maybe you can relate to also being a, a happy, functional, great person and then you think that you're evolved and you're you know doing this personal growth and then you get around your family and you also might go crazy. And what is it about families that does this? Well, I will probably do an entire episode on this in the future, but here's, here's a little, a few little tips and a story to help you get through this holiday season. So family, they know how to push our buttons and I'll talk more about that in a minute, about why and how that is. Um, but on top of that, not only is it the family that is all the right buttons, but now we're exhausted. There's a lot of pressure. There's high expectations around the holidays. There's too much food and maybe maybe even too much rum or too much wine. Because of all that, it's no wonder that most people, so many people cite family arguments as one of the hardest things for the season. And we talk about it as in, you know, having to tolerate the family through this time. When – in our heads, if we think about it, like that's not how we really want to spend our time. We know that it's possible to have quality time with our family and yet we've got to set ourselves up to to be in the right mind space and be present in those moments so we can enjoy them and not just be passively aggressive or snappy or all those things. Full disclosure here, you know, a few years ago my strategy was to avoid in a lot of cases, um, to not spend time with family or to drink enough wine that I found snarky comments funny and I could let it go or frankly just not even remember them. And that's the truth. Maybe that's how you're coping too. Maybe you're avoiding seeing them. Maybe you're avoiding through drinking or passive aggressive comments. Or maybe it's full-blown aggression and arguments. I'm not sure. Here is what I have learned. And it's not going to be popular. And I hope that despite that, you will still listen. And I, again, I want to put in this really important disclaimer. This is not for, for abusive relationships, for physical, verbal, sexual abuse, for violent situations. This is not for that. This is for when we are annoyed or frustrated by our family and how to turn that around. Here we go. The reason why we get triggered, the reason why I get triggered, the reason why you get triggered is because other people are showing us something that we don't like in ourselves. You can only get triggered because of yourself. Like No one else can trigger you or make you angry or make you feel a certain way. They can't. No one else can make you frustrated. You make you frustrated. I know. <laughs> this is not what you want to hear. Trust me, this is not what I wanted to hear either. I wanted to be like, can't we just, you know, pour a giant bottle of wine and vent about my family and all the – and maybe, by the way, I'm talking about family, but maybe this is coworkers too, right? Like how annoying are they? Trust me when I say it's taken me a long time to get this realization and I'm not perfect and I'm still working through this and there's so many layers here, which is what is challenging and also what I love about this topic. So let me share a little story with you. Uh, A couple months ago, my mom came to visit and I kept snapping at her. Everything she did was driving me nuts. You know, she put Sonoma's socks on wrong. She wasn't listening to me when I asked her not to spoon feed Sonoma and she was doing the laundry every single day when I was like, stop wasting water. Oh my gosh, don't you know that we're in a climate crisis, all these things. 
And trust me when I say this, over a bottle of wine or a cocktail, I would have ranted with you and maybe you'd rant back and you'd agree that, you know, yeah, I can't believe she's doing that. I can't believe this. I spent a lot of that, a lot of years with that being my cycle. I would, you know, get upset or I would just avoid it. I would react to it. I would, then I would drink it away or vent about it and ignore it and then just repeat. Like I'd never actually do something about it. Maybe you can relate. I am committed to breaking some of those cycles, to not just um, being this like really happy, joyful, when I think a wonderful person 99% of the time and then having these moments that just trigger me and take me right to the kind of person I don't want to be. And so I am on a mission. I'm on a journey to become a better version of me. And I know a lot of you guys are too, which is which is why I'm sharing this. So to w- learn more about myself, I've worked with a lot of coaches and therapists so I can keep diving in. And here, you guys, I'm on this journey forever. Like I can only go, I can only take my, my clients and you guys as far as I've gone, which is why I keep working on this. So I worked on this with my therapist and here's what I uncovered after a great session with a lot of Kleenex. It was so good. But the bottom line is this, that I don't think I'm good enough with my in my relationship with my mom and I struggle with this like I'm not enough. And when what comes up in those moments of me not feeling good enough, that that's the underlying belief, what happens is then I project that onto her that she is not good enough. Wow. I can feel emotion coming up even as I'm sharing this because it's it's still it's still raw. It's still real. It's still something that I'm, I'm working through. And I'm sure that I will, I will talk about this in more in a future episode around projection and triggers and this. But what I wanted to share with you is that whatever is happening in those situations, whatever is being triggered in you, there is always – there's an emotion you're going to feel, whether that's frustration or anger or irritation or whatever. And then underlying that, there's always a thought or a belief And this is why I talk so much about mindset, talk so much about limiting beliefs, because on the surface, it looks like my mom's just just doing the wrong things. And then below that, the emotion is, well, she's driving me crazy and she's frustrating me. But below that is is a belief that that something about about me, in fact. And then I project that and it comes out as her not being good enough. So this is also, let me quickly say this. This is another reason why when people get get mad at you. Um, when, when you anger other people, when you trigger other people, it's often not about you. It's about them and what you do with them. So like I said, whole topic we can vent, rant about, talk about, go deep on, which I love going deep, by the way, um, on a different episode. And this is, by the way, this is the kind of stuff too that we do a lot in my programs is this kind of work. But let me just bring it back up here and let's talk about what that looks like for the holiday season. So first step here is to change your perspective and really get curious about yourself what I've had to do is I look at family gatherings and and any situation, by the way, where I know I might be triggered, um, certain types of meetings or um, difficult conversations, I use it as a chance to get curious about myself and learn more about me, where I still have limitations, where I still have frustrations and negative beliefs and fears. If you have been triggered, if you are feeling this way, annoyed, frustrated, angry, irritated, stop, put a pause in there and check in with what your mind is telling you. The best thing you can do is put some space between that emotion, you know, the the frustration, the irritation, the uh, uh, all that thing. Put some space between that and your actual response. Now, by the way, you exploring your this like during the holidays and in these situations is going to be the equivalent of working with a coach or a therapist. You know, this is this is the work. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about personal growth. Like this holidays is your prime freaking chance to figure out where are you still uh, having limitations? Where do you have negative beliefs? Where is your self-worth need to be elevated? Where are you still having fears? This is the work. And I think that changing your perspective and getting curious about it, seeing this as being just part of your journey and being like, yeah, this is going to be a great opportunity for me to still figure this out and learn more about me, learn more about you. If you can change your perspective there, that's going to change your entire situation. A second thing you can do, have gratitude for the lessons. Have gratitude that, you know, when when these these people, whether it's coworkers or family, whether they're showing you where you still need to grow. One of the things I do is before these situations, I literally take a moment. And sometimes it's it's truly as I have um I had a stressful meeting last week, by the way, and so I, I felt this exact thing. I could feel like this nervous vibration through my entire body and I took a moment to meditate and I just welcomed and had gratitude for the gifts and lessons that were about to come my way because all of it is just showing me where I still get to grow and I had just had such pure gratitude and welcomed that in. Here's another tip here. 
it's not your responsibility and it's not your job to change them. And you probably can't. Uh, this is something that one of my first coaches taught me this. He's, I remember having these conversations and I was like, yeah, I just, I just need to change. I just need to change. Uh, I can't remember. If I, well, t- talking about my mom or talking about coworkers. And he was like, you think after 60 years you're going to change them? And he literally just laughed. It was like this, ha, 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 ha. And I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't just change them. And he's like, no, that's not how that works. After 60 years, you think you're going to change them? Yeah, right. So that's my loving advice from passed down from one of my coaches to you. It's not about changing others. It's, it's only your responsibility to change you and your response. Release the pressure or expectation that you're going to change anyone else and instead focus on you, focus on your response. And when you change that, when you give yourself space between the emotion and how you respond, you're going to change everything. When you change you, you change others around you as a result of that. All right, a couple more little pieces of advice here around staying sane, I guess. Build in some breathing room. And this goes back to tip number four, which was to focus on you. But really build this in. You know, have meetups with friends, people that do lift you up. Build in a walk, a yoga class, a date. Put in a breather for you so that you've got the breathing room and the space to go away, take it away, take your lessons, do your work, release a little stress, get a little sweat on, whatever you need to do, and then come back up. Here's the last little piece I want to say on this. Don't expect perfection. I'm sharing these tips knowing full well that I'm going to have to listen to this episode and remind myself of this mid-holidays, and that is okay. I'm not going to beat myself up, and I don't want you to either. We're going to slip up, okay? We're going to make mistakes. We're going to, you know, snap or storm out or get passive aggressive or we're going to vent. We're just, we're going to be triggered in some way. And again, that's okay. Let's just get curious and have gratitude for the lessons and know that we are on the, if you're on this journey of personal growth, if you're working to be a better version of you, all you need to worry about is changing yourself and giving yourself permission to do it imperfectly. It's a journey. It's a process. And you just listening to this, you just showing up with a different perspective, is fundamentally going to change how you show up to your holidays, how you show up for those around you, and who you grow into. Okay, I I know that that was deep, but, you know, if we're going to talk about throughout this podcast about achieving our goals, you know that I'm a big believer that it's not about your goals, it's about who you become. And I believe it's about becoming our best selves. So I want to be honest with you about the times when I'm not my best self and share how when I explore these that then it guides me and it teaches me where I can still learn. And I, I share that with the hopes that it will teach, show you the same and give you permission to not be perfect and to make mistakes and still show up and be okay with, with trying and regrouping and having gratitude for those lessons. I hope that through that, it helps you reframe your holidays, even if those people that may drive you a little nutty, remember, <laughs> they're just there. Part of their part of their journey, part of your journey is to learn what the wisdom that they have to share with you. And really, here's a here's a thing. It's it's a jump start on your personal growth journey. It is like free coaching, free therapy, as long as you actually do the work and don't respond here. And don't respond um with your automatic <laughs> passive aggressiveness or comments or whatever happens. Okay. This can be free coaching and free therapy and incredible personal growth when you have that attitude, which hopefully now you do. All right. Let's just recap here the five tips for keeping up with your goals and still enjoying your holidays the way you're meant to. Number one, reconnect to your goal. Decide what's most important. Decide what you're going to do, how you want to feel through this holiday season, and how your goal ties to that. I don't recommend pulling the gas pedal off all the way because if you've got some momentum going there, keep it up. But give yourself some grace to still enjoy these holidays. So pick Pick what's important to you and say no to everything else. Remember, if your goal is still important, you're just going to continue on with it in January and February as long as it's going to take to get there because time doesn't matter. What matters is that you still want it. It still matters to you and you're going to keep going. Tip number two, create a holiday bucket list. Remember, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. It's not just about goals. It's not just about hustle, achieving more and more and more. It is about living in this precious moment and soaking up the life that you have today. Make the most of this season, you guys. Like, think about the things that you absolutely love about this season and make a list and then go make those happen. Literally put them in your calendar. Book the tickets. Book the childcare. Uh, do what you have to do. Go book the trip to, to Australia if you want to and have a white sand Christmas, whatever it is. But have a list. Have a clear idea of what things are most important to you and make those happen. Tip number three. If it is not a part of your goal and if it's not on your holiday bucket list, you're going to deboss it. So debosses, it means you delegate it, you batch it, 
you outsource it, you simplify, or you stop doing it. And I don't care whether we're talking about the, the dinner, or whether we're talking about the cards, or whether we're talking about the holiday parties, whatever it is, my friend, if it is not on your bucket list and it's not connected to your goal, you're going to delegate it, you're going to batch it, you're going to outsource, you're going to stop doing it, or you're going to simplify it. That is how you're going to remove the stress and really make sure that you have time to keep up with your goal and do things that you actually want to do this holiday. Number four, focus on you. You are the conduit for everything. If you are exhausted, you're going to throw out exhaust fumes into the world. Take care of you, whether that means making sure every morning you're doing your meditation, if that means putting it out of office on your calendar or booking a couple days off, if that means making sure you got work uh, workouts planned, a workout video on your phone, um, you booked classes for yourself, you've got to book yourself a spa day, you do whatever it is to make you happy, okay, my friend? Because if you're not happy, you're not going to be present when you're watching the holiday movie and you're going to be making your mental to-do list. If you aren't feeling good, you're going to show up to the holiday party and you're going to argue with your partner or you're not going to actually get on the dance floor like you said you were going to, to Mariah Carey's classics because those are the best, let's be honest here. You got to focus on you and really be in a place where you can actually thrive and enjoy the holidays. If you aren't taking care of you, that's not going to be possible. And then, frankly, what is the point? I don't know. Tip number five. <laughs> Whew, how to sum this one up in one sentence. <laughs> well, <laughs> use your experiences with your family as a chance for you to grow personally and deeper. Use any triggers, any frustrations with those around you as a chance to explore and have gratitude for the lessons that they're going to show you. You may not be perfect. You may not get it all right, but you can't change others. You can only change yourself. And you're on this journey to become the best version of you, to become someone who who lives a life you want to be living. And I know that that means that there's some growth that's going to happen for you. And you can use this holiday season as times with your family or the people that frustrate you the most as basically free coaching and free therapy uh, and like a crash course in all things personal growth. So change your perspective on that. And that is how you're going, you are going to be able to spend time with the family and the friends and those that are closest to you um, and really be your best self and enjoy that and be the kind of person that you want to be. So with that, um, you guys, I hope you have an incredible holiday season. This is a special time of year. Don't let go of your goals completely. If you got momentum going, keep up with that momentum, but give yourself grace. Enjoy the moments. Enjoy this time of year. It is special. Soak it up. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Golden Girls Podcast. If you enjoyed this, let me know. I know this was a little different than some of our other episodes, but I hope that it was special. I hope that it was a little bit fun. And uh, you guys, this this season is one of my favorites and uh, I'm taking my own advice here too and and making sure that I'm carving out time for what's important to me, for how I want to feel and soaking up the lessons that I know are inevitably going to come from the challenges when they hit. So thank you guys so much for listening, and I hope you have an incredible day, an incredible season, and I will chat with you in the next episode of Golden Girls Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If something spoke to you, send me a message by sharing this episode and tagging me on social media. If you know someone who would love to hear this episode, please share it with them too. Because I love surprises, make sure you subscribe to the Golden Girls Podcast today. It's the only way to find out about bonus surprise episodes and make sure you don't miss a single beat on your golden journey. Thanks again for listening, and I will talk to you in the next episode of the Golden Girls Podcast.